Today we're going to be talking about the archetype cycles of the seasons. One of the best stories to use for this is the tale of Demeter and Persephone. Our characters. First we have Demeter, who is the goddess of summertime and the harvest. She is a happy god and people love her. We have Persephone, who is Demeter's beloved only daughter. As you can see, she's kind of a babe. That's a big part of the story. And finally, we have Hades, who is the god of the underworld. Hades lives where the dead live. He is in charge of the kingdom of the dead, and he is really into Persephone because she's so beautiful. One day, as Persephone was wandering happily through the fields, a pit opened up in the ground. The lord of the dark underworld, the king of the multitudinous dead, carried her off when, enticed by the wondrous bloom of the Narcissus, she strayed too far from her companions. In his chariot, drawn by coal-black steeds, he rose up through a chasm in the earth, and grasping the maiden by the wrist, set her beside him. He bore her away, weeping down to the underworld. The high hills echoed her cry in the depths of the sea, and her mother heard it. She sped like a bird over sea and land, seeking her daughter, but no one would tell her the truth, no man nor God, nor any sure messenger from the birds. Nine days Demeter wandered, and all that time she would not taste of ambrosia or put sweet nectar to her lips. Demeter was devastated at the loss of her daughter, and she wandered the earth for one long, miserable year. In her sadness, she said she would never let the earth bear fruit until she had seen her daughter. That year was most dreadful and cruel for mankind over all the earth. Nothing grew. No seed sprang up. In vain, the oxen drew the plowshare through the furrows. It seemed the whole race of men would die of famine. At last, Zeus saw that he must take the matter in hand. He sent the gods to Demeter, one after another, to try to turn her from her anger, but she listened to none of them. Never would she let the earth bear fruit until she had seen her daughter. Then Zeus realized that his brother must give way. He told Hermes to go down to the underworld and to bid the lord of it let his bride go back to Demeter. Hermes found the two sitting side by side, Persephone shrinking away, reluctant, because she longed for her mother. At Hermes' words, she sprang up joyfully, eager to go. Her husband knew that he must obey the word of Zeus and send her up to earth away from him, but he prayed her as she left him to have kind thoughts of him and not be so sorrow sorrowful that she was the wife of one who was great among the immortals. And he made her eat a pomegranate seed, knowing in his heart that if she did so, she must return to him. He got ready his golden car, and Hermes took the reins and drove the black horses straight to the temple where Demeter was. She ran out to meet her daughter as swiftly as a maenad runs down the mountainside. Persephone sprang into her arms and was held fast there. All day they talked of what had happened to them both, and Demeter grieved when she heard of the pomegranate seed, fearing that she could not keep her daughter with her. Then Zeus sent another messenger to her, a great personage, none other than his revered mother Rhea, the oldest of the gods. Swiftly she hastened down from the heights of Olympus to the barren, leafless earth, and standing at the door of the temple, she spoke to Demeter. Come, my daughter, for Zeus, far-seeing, loud thundering, bids you, Come once again to the halls of the gods, where you shall have honor, where you will have your desire, your daughter, to comfort your sorrow. As each year is accomplished and bitter winter is, en winter is ended, for a third part only the kingdom of darkness shall hold her. For the rest you will keep her, you and the happy immortals. Peace now, give men life which comes alone from your giving. Demeter did not refuse, poor comfort though it was, that she must lose Persephone for four months every year, and see her young loveliness go down to the world of the dead. But she was kind. The good goddess, men always called her. She was sorry for the desolation she had brought about. She made the fields once more rich with abundant fruit and the whole world bright with flowers and green leaves. Also, she went to the princes of Eleusius, who had built her temple, and she chose one, Triptolemus, to be her ambassador to men, instructing them how to sow the corn. In the stories of both goddesses, Demeter and Persephone, the idea of sorrow was foremost. 
Demeter, goddess of the, the harvest wealth, was still more the divine sorrowing mother who saw her daughter die each year. Persephone was the radiant maiden of the spring, and in the summertime, whose light step upon the dry brown hillside was enough to make it fresh and blooming. But all the while Persephone knew how brief that beauty was. Fruits, flowers, leaves, all the fair growth of earth must end with the coming of the cold and pass, like herself, into the power of death. After the lord of the dark world below carried her away, she was never again the gay young creature who had played in the flowery meadow without a thought of care or trouble. She did indeed rise from the dead every spring, but she brought with her the memory of where she had come from. With all her bright beauty, there was something strange and awesome about her. She was often said to be the maiden whose name may not be spoken. <laughs>